why today? I want to be with you again and share the Word of God and share pictures and testimonies. God bless you. And this is the month of September, so remember, it's a September to remember. So Capitol Assembly and anyone else watching, this is a special month. As I said, S for September, but S for smile. May God give you many smiles before this month of September is over in Jesus' name. So I'm here to share the word and first of all, share some things that we have available. Anytime I'm somewhere, you can always buy something to help support the ministry. Maybe you need a cap. I have two with me right now. Walk with Jesus and Jesus the only way, the only way. And then I have some of the cups. We have all sizes, all types, very big ones, too big for me, but just right for some people. And it says on this one, with God, all things are possible. A smaller one and this one, fear not, for I am with you. So even what you drink or what you wear can be a time of testifying to yourself and others. We always have our calendars. Even right now we have the 2020 calendar, but the new one will be out in the next two or three days. And by the end of September, we'll have some and try to make it possible for you to get some as well. Our beautiful calendar, uh, read about the ministry, what God has done, see the beautiful pictures. I love these pictures and every year they are different and blessed. We pray over them a lot. And the black and white at the bottom is the thought for the day. Every day different. Read the thought for the day and it can impact your life. Sort of like a daily devotion something to really minister to you. One of them says, suffering is like a magnet and it can bring you closer to God. And so you can read the thought for the day and look up the scripture and be blessed every day of the whole year. And the pictures are a blessing anywhere you put them when the year is up. We still have a few calendars like this and we are also making the new ones. Picture at the top is so beautiful and the calendar at the bottom. And when the year is over, just cut off the calendar and you've got a beautiful, beautiful picture. I love this one. When prayer goes up, blessings come down. I expect a miracle today. And so I brought one more for you to see. And Jesus is my healer. These are colorful and very much to minister to you. And we also have stickers and I will have some key holders, key rings and uh, stickers. Here's just a few of them blood of Jesus covers me and I'm moving from glory to glory in Jesus name and, and surely the Lord is in this place and, and Jesus is Lord one of the most famous ones so good things are there my books, I write books I have 15 books and the next one, number 16 called My Heart is in Africa The Story of My Life is Almost Ready and then other books I write like Words of Wisdom and Words of healing, lots of healing testimonies, and words of success, and words of victory, and words from the Lord, the first of my words books, and the most recent ones, my husband's wonderful stories he loved to tell, volume one, volume two. We also have them on audiobooks, ask me. We have them available. You can get my songs on a CD, and lots of other things, but this is what we have available right now. And so get them if you can. Remember to pray for me. I need lots of people to back me with prayer. And there are people all over the world praying today, maybe even right now, for me. Prayer changes things. And prayer is so important. Pray for God's anointing on my life. Pray for God's provision of every need. Pray for God's protection, times of danger. Pray for me, God's strength. A, anointing, P, provision, P, protection, and S, strength. What does it spell? Apps. So every time you think of apps on your phone or you're looking at apps, remember to pray for me. And I appreciate it so very much. As I travel, as I minister, and I, I go so many places, countries all over Africa. I go to India every two years. I will go again next year. I need people to pray, so be one and give to help the ministry. If you buy something of things I've shown you, or if you uh, give to the ministry through the bank account, I'm very grateful. If you need to know about my bank account, make a transfer at any time. It's Stambic IBTC Bank, 
Uh, the account is in my name, and it's uh, number 9300697982. That will get to me, and uh, you can get more information whenever you ask, or ask them at the church and in the office. They can give you the information. So I appreciate it. Be a partner, and let's reach people for Jesus. I'm now 81 years old. That means I've been around longer than many people who are watching today. I've seen a lot with my eyes, and I praise God. I'm in Africa, where my heart has always been, and I can share the word every day with somebody. God bless you. Let's look at some pictures. I have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of pictures and testimonies. And I always love to start with this one. My handsome husband, Arthur Hokett. We were married nearly 54 years. He's been with the Lord for nine years plus now. And I thank God for all those years together, serving God, ministering together all these years. It's a great, great blessing. And I praise God. I was side by side with a great man of God. He was preaching before we met. And we were just teenagers when we met. And all these years together, God has been so faithful and I give him praise. I'm alone now, it's just me, but Jesus is with me every step of the way. And he's put people to help me. Every time I need someone to help, he's right there. Jesus goes with me and I praise God. Our son, we have one son, our miracle son. He was born after a wait of 12 years. And I thank God, he's a miracle and a great blessing. We talk on the phone all the time. And our daughter-in-law, our three grown-up grandsons, they're all a great blessing. So I praise God for our family. Our son was born and raised in Ghana. We lived in Ghana many years before Nigeria. And I've been in Africa over 53 years now. So our son is a great blessing. We have seen mighty miracles and testimonies. With my eyes, I've seen every kind of sickness healed. This lady in Kenya is so excited with a big smile that day. Jesus had healed her of HIV. Her blood is totally negative today. AIDS is gone. HIV is gone. She's happy. Praise God. A lady in Mozambique prayed for her in Maputo. She was always seeing spots in front of her eyes. Couldn't see clearly. But that night, it all changed. Jesus healed her eyes, and she was praising God. Next day, she came and said, this is the first day that I've been able to see clearly because of Jesus. This man brought his teenage son to me in Miami, Florida. Do you remember this boy? I looked at him and I said, I think so. We prayed for him when he was just a little boy in that same church in Miami, Florida. I looked up the picture quickly and found it. He had been young, much younger, and he had a problem with his feet. He couldn't, walk caref he couldn't walk as he should. Normally, he couldn't walk, just limped along. His feet both needed surgery. We had prayed for those feet, and Jesus had totally healed the feet. And now he's a teenager, a handsome teenager. He said, I play football on my school team. Jesus did it. He's the mighty healer today. A lady in Botswana and First time I met her, she had problems with both knees. She said, I can't get on my knees to pray anymore. She said, I have so many problems. They're stiff. They're painful. I just laid hands on those knees, and they are totally healed. She said, look what I can do now, a few days later. And she was on her knees, moving across the platform on her knees. Can you do that? Jesus made the knees strong and well again in Botswana. This lady in Ghana, northern Ghana, in one of the churches that we've helped build in a very small town there. The pastor, and I know the pastor well. I taught him how to read 50 years ago, and he's a pastor even today. He brought this woman to us when I was at the church, and he said her family, there was a terrible curse on her family. One of her ancestors, maybe a great-grandfather, had killed another man. And the man had gone to the fetish priest, the witch doctor, to put a curse on that man and his whole family. He died a terrible death. Doctors couldn't help him. Every part of his body was swollen so big, even his tongue. Couldn't eat, couldn't talk, couldn't walk. 
It was terrible, and he died, painful, agonizing death. And after that, the curse would come upon members of the family. They never knew who or when, and they would die the same kind of death. This woman, it happened to her. And her husband went to the pastor and said, I'm not a Christian, but I've heard that you can pray to your God and miracles take place. Would you come and pray for my wife? The pastor, of course, gladly went and prayed and broke the curse, and her body returned to normal within three days. She gave her life to Christ, and I met her in that church. He delivers, Jesus delivers from all witchcraft. Amen. I prayed for this little boy some years ago in Zambia. They are originally from India, and I know them in one of the churches in Zambia. He had a skin problem. In fact, he was born with a skin problem. There were spots and little bumps all over his skin. And I prayed for him when I saw him that day. And his skin became totally clear. And you would look at his skin, any part of his skin all over his body. It's normal today. So the little boy has a great testimony right now in Zambia. This lady in Uganda had pain in every joint of her body. And we have a lot of joints, our fingers, our toes, our elbows, uh, joints all over our body. Pain and pain. As I prayed, Jesus healed her of whatever was causing the pain. And you would see her now, even several years later. No problem with joint pains, because Jesus is the healer. This lady in Kenya, I saw her recently when I was ministering in Kenya this year. And she said, I didn't have a job for four years. I needed a job. And you prayed, and I have an excellent job today. God answers prayer. We prayed for this man in an outdoor crusade in Ghana, Kamasi, Ghana, some years ago. And as we prayed from the front, the platform, this man got healed out in the audience. And he came running to the front with his crutches over his head. And he said, look, I can walk, I can run. He had had a bad problem with one leg for years and had to always use the crutches. But Jesus healed him and he walks perfectly. And the next night, we saw him jumping and dancing with all the people during the service. And he said, look what I can do. God did a miracle for him. Hallelujah. We prayed for her right there in Capitol Assembly for her husband. And look what God has done. He brought the right husband to her, and she's happy today. And we've shared this testimony many times. A single person, man or woman, praying for a life partner. God answers. Hallelujah. This man is in Ghana, Accra, Ghana, and he's a mechanic. His name is Mark. I don't know his last name. I just always call him Mark Mechanic. He's the one who, when I'm ready to go back to Ghana twice a year, stay for many weeks where we're helping build churches in northern Ghana, he goes to where the key is kept and he gets it and gets the car cleaned up and repairs anything that's needed. And so he had a stroke one time. As he was coming to me to collect the money after I'd arrived for what he had done, his son, thank God, was with him. The son quickly called, my dad has fallen, he's had a stroke. I said, get him to the nearest hospital as fast as you can. Mark Mechanic was in a coma in the hospital for three days. They didn't think he would make it. But as we prayed, Jesus answered, and he was restored. And it was like he had come to life again when he had been in that coma. And he said, I don't even remember what happened. I just know I'm strong, I'm well, no signs of a stroke. I'm back to his mechanic job again. Hallelujah. Well, we've prayed many times for miracle cars. And this couple in Nairobi, my good friends, pastors, didn't have a car. Uh, they needed one so much. She saw the key holders and she picked the most beautiful one, the key rings, and said, this will be for the miracle car. She showed it to her husband and he laughed and said, we won't get a car anytime soon. But next time I was there, there was their nice car. And they took me in the car to where I was preaching at their church. God did a miracle for them. Amen. Well, this is my good family. They have been to Capitol Assembly and, and met me there sometimes. It's uh, Brother Israel and the wife and the children. And um, I can connect you with them in Niger Republic. 
at any time. They are working in the desert in one of the hardest places in the world. And God is using them to win people to Christ, mostly Muslims, one by one by one. I give God and I praise God for Israel and Esther Olubamisaye. And they have been a great blessing. This lady is using the microphone, giving a testimony. She's in a prison in Harare, Zimbabwe. Every year I ministered there in a, a place where the women, the Women's International Fellowship, they minister in both the men's prison and the women's prison and minister to so many widows and orphans and do so many good things. And last year, when I was there in November, they had the women's choir. The prison had given permission for them to come with two of the guards and, and be in the bus, the prison bus, and minister. This lady is one of the prisoners, and she said, I got saved in the prison after a life of sin. I've given my heart to Christ. I'm going through a Bible school course. And she said, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel in the prison. And as soon as I get out, I will be preaching the gospel outside. I praise God. He works in mighty ways in prisons, prisons ministry. We have done a lot of it ourselves, ministering to people who need Jesus. Well, when I went to Israel last year, it was my first time to be in the Holy Land, to walk where Jesus walked, and to be in all the places in Israel that are so fantastic to see the Bible come to life. I walked where Jesus walked. I saw where he preached the Sermon on the Mount. I was there. I saw, and it was even in the boat going across the Sea of Galilee. I saw the place where Moses called down fire from heaven, pray for Israel. I was blessed to be there last year. A friend in the U.S. paid everything for me to go and join a group there, and I will never forget it, like a dream that came true in my 80th year, like a wonderful 80th birthday present. I saw and was in Jericho, and there it is. It's the oldest city in the world that has always been inhabited. Other cities come and go, but Jericho is still there and I was in Jericho. I also was there at the garden tomb where uh, Jesus came out of the tomb and uh, we even had devotions together in a place right there close by. I praise God for what I saw with my eyes and I hope every one of you can someday have a chance to go to Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I saw this on a stone just outside the garden tomb. Pray, the Bible says, for the peace of Jerusalem. It's where God's people, the Jews, live today. Praise God. We were ministering in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and the door opened while I was ministering, and a young man walked in and sat with his head in his hands, weeping during the service. And when I gave the altar call, he ran, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And so we prayed for him, and he gave his life to Christ. Pastor Eshetu Wuriki, the Ethiopian pastor, prayed and ministered with him for a few minutes and talked to him in Amharic, their language. And so then he told us his story. He said, I was ready to kill myself. I had a rope in my pocket, and he pulled it out and showed it to us. I was going to hang myself from a certain tree. But as I was walking with tears down the road, I heard the loudspeakers, didn't know there was a church here, came inside this little church meeting in a tent, and he said, look what's happened to me today. I've given my life to Christ. And so we praise God. He didn't die from all of his tears and his heartache and his disappointment and his discouragement, but he's a child of God in Ethiopia today. This man, I heard his testimony in Kampala, Uganda, just uh, in the month of February, last of February. And he said, I swallowed a fish bone. I was by myself. I was coughing. I was trying to get it out. I couldn't cough it out. I knew I was dying. He said, just as I was about to give up, Jesus helped me and I coughed it out. It was a miracle. No one to help him. But Jesus said, I'm with you always. Amen. My cousin in America and she suffered with cancer, very, very serious. She was under treatments, and it looked so terrible. The family and many others prayed for her, and Jesus has healed her. 
many years later, no cancer. She and my cousin pastor a big church in the U.S. And since that happened, they have prayed for six other people in their church who have all been healed of cancer. Jesus heals today. Well, I shared this testimony many times. A lady in, in Lagos, she brought her picture and asked us to pray for her sister in the picture. And she said she has cancer and she has uh, finished all the treatments she can do here. Uh, doctors have suggested she goes to UK and has more treatments and perhaps very serious surgery. We laid hands on the picture, as we've done many times with pictures, and we prayed for healing. Well, she did go on to UK, took all of her files with her, and the doctors tested her in every way possible and even looked at all the pages and pages of files. Finally, they said, Lady, are you sure you're the same person in these files? We can't find any trace of the cancer, and these files show that it was there. She said, Jesus has touched me. And very soon she was back in Lagos, working in her bank job. Jesus touched her. And when Jesus touches you, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Lady giving testimony in Kenya, how she had had a, a growth in her body, and Jesus healed her. He heals today. Jesus is the healer. He will touch you, whatever your problem, no matter what the doctors have said. Jesus does it. Lady just recently, also in Uganda, when I was there in February, and she was very sick when she came, had high fever, and the lady was just suffering so much pain and weakness. I prayed, and before the service was over, that temperature had gone down. And she was feeling much better. Whatever it was, the attack was over. With our God, all things are possible. Amen. Well, when I go to India, many times I put on a sari and look like Indian ladies, and I praise God. And as I minister in India, one time I prayed for this lady, and the lady couldn't lift up her arm. Her, her arm was stuck, couldn't lift it up above this high. And as we prayed... Jesus touched her. She said, look what I can do before the service was over. God touches every part of our body, heals every sickness. Amen. Lady in India, she said in her testimony, the doctors had told her she would have to have surgery, have a C-section to deliver the baby. It would be impossible to try for a normal delivery. But God did it. She didn't have the cesarean, the C-section. Her baby came normally. No problem. God changed everything, and he made it possible. Amen. This couple in India has graduated recently from a Bible school just last year, and I minister every time I'm in India in that Bible school all day, the whole day on a Saturday. Now they came to a service in a church the next day. They have just graduated, and God has called them to go to far places in the northern part of India where there are very, very, very few Christians. Tough place, but God helps us and uses us even in the toughest, hardest place. Be sure you stay right in the place where God wants you to be and you'll see his blessings in your life. We've been helping build churches all over northern Ghana for many years, and I praise God one after the other in villages and towns. They get the walls up like this, and many times we can help because people help me to help them. And we help pastors finish churches. So that one got a roof. This one also got a roof and even has been dedicated to God, finished today. Villages and towns, and I praise God. Putting the roof on is exciting. I get so many pictures, and I'm praising God every step of the way. So first we help get the roof on, and then we help to plaster the walls. They give and give their offerings. That I, sometimes I get to help open the church if I'm there for the dedication. I was cutting the ribbon this day, and it's a blessing. Even during this pandemic time, they have dedicated five churches in my absence, and another one coming up this same week. I give God praise. We're getting them finished for the glory of God. This one got finished, and I give God praise. And uh, uh, we just thank God. This one in Bisaldo, 
and uh, they are praising God. This one in Gorgo, northern Ghana, a place where there are many big, big rocks. And I thank God they're getting finished. This one, a place called Bimbagu. And from this church, we've helped them build village churches in some of their outstation places. Even during all of this time of the uh, lockdowns and the pandemic and so on, they have helped to build and we've been with them every step in three villages where they have churches now. We give God praise. This one, very beautiful. The pastor there with me is a carpenter and had all kinds of ideas. And we praise God, this one in northern Ghana, a place called Tinga, and we thank God. Another one, this one in Diari, in northern Ghana. They're all colors, all sizes, and everybody makes them different, but they're all finished because God helps me. And this one, if you look over the door, it's called the Reverend Hokit Memorial Church, even. So some they have even named after my husband, and I praise God. Another one finished, pink ones. Uh, blue ones, green ones, uh, even a purple one, yellow ones, and I praise God all across northern Ghana. So pray for that part of the ministry. We're now on 94 and 95, and we're trying to get to 100. So God has blessed all these years. We've prayed for miracle babies, and this pastor in Nigeria in the north, and the doctor said she could never have children. Totally impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And they now have four beautiful children in Nigeria. Prayed for this man and the wife in Ado Ekiti. And I said, I, I will hold your hands and believe you will hold a baby next year. And a year later, they were holding their, their child. Big smiles on their faces. They had tried for five years and didn't have a child. But God answers prayer and he gives us the desires of our hearts. A lady in India, God has given her a child after we had prayed. Even my husband had prayed for her in India the last time he was there. And uh, I was preaching in another church that day. And I got to see the baby when I went to India the first time after my husband went to be with Jesus. God did a miracle there in India. And God did a miracle in Abuja. I love to share this testimony. And uh, Pastor Francis and Pastor Martha and Little Delight has brought great joy and delight after all those years, 18 and a half years, they never gave up. God answers prayer. Uh, this couple in Ghana, uh, we had known them and prayed for them and, and they were believing God for a baby and God gave them two. They have twins. They sent the pictures to me and I was happy to see what God did after 15 years. Hallelujah. I love this picture they sent. They sent me two. And this one, the mother with two bouncing baby boys. The father of these little miracle twin boys, uh, the man was sitting beside me on the platform of a church that we were dedicating. And uh, he was one of the speakers and I was one of the speakers. And he said, my wife and the two boys are here. Get an up-to-date picture. A little bigger now. Two boys. God gave them twins. And I have one more testimony. Just very recently, month of February in Uganda, I saw my friends who God answered prayer in a big way. As we prayed for a baby, God gave them four. They thought it was triplets, it was three, but it was four. And it was, we praise God. They were in Uganda. They came to a service, three little boys and a little girl. And, and I got to be with them in the service in Uganda with our God. All things are possible. Praise God. I want to sing for you a beautiful song, and it's the prayer of my heart. I hope the prayer of yours. The song says, Holy Spirit, touch through me. Let my hands reach out. Love through me flow through me. Listen and be blessed and make it the prayer of your heart. Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. 
listen. Touch through me, oh Holy Spirit, will you touch through me? Let these hands reach out to others, touch them through me. There's a lonely soul somewhere needing just one friend to bear. Touch him through me, Holy Spirit. Touch through me. And love through me. Oh, Holy Spirit, will you love through me? Yes, I will be my brother's keeper. Love him through me. For there's a lonely soul somewhere needing just one friend to pray love him through me Holy Spirit love through me yes love through me and flow through me please Holy Spirit Will you flow through me? Just like a river out in the desert flow through me. Springing up a living stream those living waters so pure and clean flow through me Holy Spirit flow through me Listen up. My hands will be your hands yes, reaching out to others Long to see And I will be A good Samaritan To those Who are In need And I will Be your house To dwell Yes, live in me. So flow through me, Holy Spirit. Love through me, Holy Spirit. And touch through me, Holy Spirit. Touch through me. Touch through me. Amen, amen, amen. Holy Spirit, make it real in our lives and touch people through us. Let's look into the Word of God. I have my Bible. Do you have yours? Or perhaps you have it on your cell phone and get a pen and piece of paper, have a notebook if you can, click it into your cell phone or do both like some people do. And let's look at the word hope. 
H O P E. Just four letters. And let me share what God has given me. Let's write it down. Some scriptures on the word hope. Let me begin with that. Let's start with Psalms 42, verse 5. Psalms 42, 5. David must have been very discouraged, and he said, Why am I cast down? Why am I so sad? Why does it seem like I have no hope? Wait a minute, he said in the middle of the verse, I have hope in God. I will yet praise him. I will praise him again. I'm not cast down. God changes my story. When we were living in northern Ghana, and we were there many years before Nigeria, and we were helping build churches all across the northern part of Ghana, and on number 95 right now. And so I learned how to say that first part of that verse in the Mampruli language. And it says, uh, in Sufu Satan, my heart has fallen down. In Sufu Satan, I'm very sad. And David said, but my hope is in God. The word hope is in other places. Let me quickly give you some more. Here's Psalms 37, verse 7. Psalms 37, 7. My hope is in you, Lord. Another verse, Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. It says, blessed is the man whose hope is, whose trust is in the Lord, for the Lord is his hope. He is our hope. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. Sorrow not as others who have no hope. And one more. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. And it says, the man whose hope is in this life only, he will be miserable. Our hope is in the life to come. Our hope is in God. Today, you may be facing things that look so terrible, and you could have lost hope. You may have given up. Don't give up. There is hope. When you have Jesus, you can make it. When you have Jesus, no matter what your problem is, there is hope. So be connected with Jesus. Be sure you know him personally as your Lord and Savior. Be sure he's King of kings and Lord of lords in your life. So there is hope even when you're sick and suffering. There is hope even when it seems you've given up. There is hope when you're in financial problems or you're just discouraged about life itself, your family, your extended family. Don't give up. Have hope. Let's write the letters of the word hope. Left side of your paper, up and down, vertically, block letters, H, then an O, and then a P, and an E. And take your pen, go over them so you see them very bright, very bold, very sharp. Here's the first letter. When it seems there's no hope, here's the H, have faith. First line, have faith, just two simple words. Keep your faith strong, keep it totally in the Lord. Let me give you a verse for the have faith. It's found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith. My husband preached a whole message one time about those two words. Now faith. He said your faith must be up to date. It must be there right now. Not yesterday's faith, but right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for it's also the evidence of things not seen. If you see it, it's a fact. It's already there. But if you can have hope and have faith in opening your spiritual eyes and opening your eyes of faith, you can see it even when it's not there. You can have God. So have faith. It seems it's dark. And it seems like life is so full of problems and there's no way out. God can make a way out. Have faith. Here's the next letter, an O. The O is for overcome. It begins with O, overcome fear. F-E-A-R, fear. It must not rule your life. During all the COVID, all the coronavirus, all the pandemic, many people are full of fear, and fear can kill you. We must overcome fear. We must know the word. We must know what God says. We can overcome. Find the verses about fear. There are so many. 
memorize them, get to know them and say them out, have hope. Fear must not put you down. No matter what fear it is, you can overcome. Christ is in you and he's your hope of glory. Here's the next letter. Let's move on. That's the H. Have faith. That's the O. Overcome fear. Here's the P. It's three words this time. Put God first. Put God first. He must and always must be number one in your life. Put God first. And here's one of my favorite verses. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Write it. Matthew 6, 33. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. He'd been talking about the things we need. All these things shall be added unto you. When you put God first, you'll see that God will take care of you. Keep him number one at all times. There will be hope, even when it looks hopeless. One more letter. It's the E for the word expect. There's the E. Expect miracles. Expect miracles. I believe God has one with your name on it today. Expect miracles. May the last months of this year be full of miracles for you and testimonies. May God give somebody a big testimony from this day. So expect miracles. Hope can change your life. Hope can change your story. Hope can put a smile on your face. Weeping may endure for the night, but ah, the blessing, it comes in the morning. Here's the last verse for the last line. It's 1 John chapter 5 and verse 22. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 22. Chapter 3, excuse me. 1 John 3, 22. Get it right. 1 John 3, 22 says, Whatsoever we ask, we can receive from Him, from God. Whatever it is, no matter how big or how small, whatever we ask, we can receive from God. Here's the next part. Because we keep His commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You keep God first in your life. Keep his commandments. Do what he says. Live right. Don't compromise with sin. Keep God first in your life and you will see miracles. All these things shall be added unto you. Whatever we ask, there's the verse, 1 John 3, 22. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Let your life line up with the Word of God. Don't try to go your own way. Go God's way. And you will see hope is for you. H, have faith. Did you get it? O, overcome fear. And the P, there it is, put God first. And the E, expect miracles. Your life can be a series of miracles. Not one, not two, but a whole series as you keep that hope in your heart. God is so faithful. And what he's done for others, he'll do for you. He can write a new chapter in your life story. Healing is yours. Deliverance is yours. Financial blessings can be yours. Family blessings. God can give you the right job, give you the right life partner. God will answer prayer, the cry of your heart. Make sure your life is pleasing to him and you do those things that are right at all times, in God's sight. If you're ever not sure of which way to go, trust God. He can show you the way. Jesus said, I am the way. So I give God praise, sharing the word of God. Let me pray for you. Right now, any need in your life, anything that looks like there's no hope and you've prayed and prayed and answer didn't come, let's pray and talk to God and believe him for your answer. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you right now. And every person who is with us today, online or wherever they're watching, in the name of Jesus, I pray, there will be hope. No one will give up. It's so easy sometimes to give up, and it may be hard to hold on. But Lord, we believe you will make a way where there seems to be no way. You will help us to know how to serve you with all our heart. Miracles to be our portion. And so, Lord, 
I pray in physical bodies, there will be sickness. There will be a touch from God. Lord, reach out now and touch people even as we pray. Take away that sickness, that lump in someone's breast, that problem with someone's back, that heart problem, Lord, that kidney problem, that, that injury that has stayed there forever, a knee that needs touching, a shoulder that needs touching, as someone suffering with HIV positive. Lord, we could name so many things, high blood pressure, diabetes. You heal them all. Do it, Lord. Let there be healing. Let there be hope. And Lord, financial things that seem so terrible and needs that are there meet someone's need in a miraculous way. Lord, family problems, extended families, sometimes they just cover us up and weigh us down. Give answers, Lord. Let people never give up, but seek your face. I hear from you. There is hope in our hearts. And when we have Jesus, we never give up. I give you praise today in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands and begin to praise him wherever you are. And believe him that he hears your cry from your heart. And there is hope in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.